UI. I'm going to write it in YUI instead, and I switch out the whole JavaScript end on it. Um, that you know that I can write uh, the API over and over again, and the documentation, and that you know what, like no matter how bad work is, I can go to this one place and have work that I'm proud that I did. You know, and it has my name associated with it. And I will say, as someone that interviews, if uh, I'm interviewing someone for a position and they don't have any code visible at all. It's a huge red flag. We have a guy right now that's highly <coughs> recommended by three different canonical employees that I'm interviewing. And my first interview, I was like, no, I, you know, I can't do it um, because he had no code to look at at all. And it's like, you know, I, I'm taking you on blind faith. And it's like, even if, so when I interviewed, I had, I had Bookie out there, which wasn't the best thing out there. But they could look and go, yeah, this guy's trying to learn how to write tests. And yeah, look, this guy's you know got decent documented you know comments and stuff in his code. And I almost wonder if I got the job more on what I had than what I you know I, I spoke well enough to not get kicked out the door. But I almost wonder how much actually having real life code to go look at um, mattered as far as getting my jobs. Um, and, and you know it doesn't hurt. That's for darn sure. So all this said, this is kind of very doom and gloom, right? Like. You know, Hello, I'm an island. I've been writing code for three years that no one cares about, except once in a while. Um, then this year kind of happened. And this year has been really, really crazy. Because um, I've always wanted to, I've always loved, and you know, I, I co opt in, in college where you work part of the time and they find you a job in your industry and you go to school. And I firmly believe it's the only way to go through college, right? Like, you know, everyone's like, college isn't required anymore. You should just be able to go. I'm like, no, 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 no. I think there's value in education. But I think there's also value in doing real work so that when you uh, get done with school, you can say, I have a degree and I've done some work in an office with people, you know? Like, I've not just sat in my little dorm room and, and filled out papers all, all the whole year. You know, and Google Summer of Code, I think, is awesome, where they pay a student five grand to, to sit at home in the summer and work on open source code. And this year, two days before the deadline, someone posted something on my Twitter feed or something, and I was like, oh, I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to, you know, write up a proposal for Bookie to be in Google Summer of Code. What's the worst that can happen, right? They say no. And so they didn't say no. They said mm. yes. <laughs> and I was like, cool. All right, cool. Google says that I can, you know, have a student or two to work on Bookie for the summer. That's awesome. Um, I had some, you know, potential projects for them to do. And so as soon as they announced, hey, here's a list of 190 projects that you can get to know and talk to about working with them for the summer students, here's a list of 190. And within like an hour, the Bookie IRC channel started to go from like our normal 8 to 10 people to like 12 to 15 to 20 to 25 to 33, up close to 40. Every one of them being students that jumped in and were like, hey, I see Bookie as a Google Summer Code project. I'm interested. What, how do I get started? And I was like, crap. Um, hello? <laughs> I just found out an hour ago that I was selected. <laughs> I don't know how you get started. Um, so we quickly threw together a Google Doc of like, you know, here's a list of projects, and here's, here's how to install Bookie, and here's what it does. And so our first thing was, was go to the doc, install it, try it out see what it does, then come back with questions, and here's a list of bite-sized bugs that I had marked in the bug tracker, because you know I had this dream that one day someone would be interested in wanting to work on Bookie, so I left these little bite-sized small bugs for others to fix, because that way they could get into it, right? right? And suddenly it happened. I had all these students, 30s of them, like showing up, wanting to fix little bugs, and I'm like, well, here's the bite-sized bugs. And this was amazing, because out of all these people that came and installed Bookie, I think two couldn't get it running. One was trying to do it on Windows, which I said, <laughs> no <one>. don't <laughs> even know, man. <laughs> um, a lot were on Mac, which they were like, well, I'll throw it in VirtualBox and put in a bunch of images and it just worked, because uh, that's how I run it. And then one was a CentOS guy, and his patch was to actually make the make file work in CentOS. So through this process of get to know your project, <laughs> All the bite-sized bugs got closed out. Uh, Bookie runs, there's instructions for it for OS X, for Arch, uh, Ubuntu, and CentOS now. It'll, you know, make install or whatever. A lot of things got fixed, and it was insane. I think I worked probably 30 hours a week on Bookie and 40 hours a week on work. And my wife was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just signed up. <laughs> Um, but it was really cool. Um, we ended up with 32 applications for two slots. Um, Kivi, I know you guys know about Kivi, the 
it's only the one I know the numbers for because Ben Rausch or whatever is involved in it. They had f seven mentors. They had six applicants. They only accepted three. So, like, and they're like running Python apps on Android, been around a long time, we're part of the Python Software Foundation or whatever. Like, so, like, we really had a huge amount of participation. And this has just been, I mean, it's awesome, right? It's like the open source developer dream that you've got. Google's going to pay students five grand this summer to implement two new features on Boogie. One guy's going to add private bookmark support, which I pumped it on because I said, well, this is open source and I'm not going to promise anything's private. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a problem I don't need. Um, but I think we're to a point now with our tests and our integration stuff and a student's going to work really hard on it. So, and external bookmark support to so like wire up Bookie to like Twitter or Identica or whatnot and pick out URLs that are shared with you where you share and turn them into bookmarks for you and such. So um, it'll be really cool, interesting. I kind of get to mentor a couple of students. Hopefully um, there are a lot of people that, that didn't get selected that are hanging around, albeit much more low key. Um, submitting you know, patches and stuff and getting involved, and it really has just been awesome. So this is the um, credits file for Bookie. Um, so this is the, uh, the almost four years down here to, uh, I think, Michael Hanna. So there were 18 over about three years and change, and then from 18 to 30, so there were 12 in one month. <coughs> so, you know, I mean, to me that was just, every time I got to add one of these little names here, I was just like, woo -hoo! you know. Um, so then, this guy jumps in IRC, and I recognize the name, the IRC name Yelmer, um, because he used to work at Canonical. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen him in a while. Like, just, you know, I just look in the company directory. He doesn't work there anymore. But he asked this question, is anyone trying to package Bookie for Debian or whatnot? And I'm like, no, like, why would you do that? That would be really, really hard. It has lots and lots of dependencies, and it seems like it would be really crazy. Um, and he's like, okay, so he filed an intent to package Bookie. Uh, and what's really cool is in the bug, people were like, oh, thank goodness, like, Semantic Shuttle is kind of like the open source bookmark app out there right now. It's completely unmaintained, and it's going to be, I think, almost removed from Debian, like it's, you know, not supported anymore. So there were people, like, really excited about having Bookie available to run their own bookmarks, you know, run their own data, open source, you know, these are the open source hippies of the world that, you know, kind of got me started where I was like, hey, I want to own my data. Um, got excited about Bookie and some guy wants to package it. And I was like, oh my god, like that's awesome. I mean, how cool is that? So then one of the dependencies, the B-readability library I mentioned, um, that the guy forked off and I did all the work to pull back in or whatnot. Um, it's a dependency and he packaged it. And this is the page from Debian. So I've written code, open source code, that is available in Debian right now. You can go app get install my source code. So it's like, Oh my god, Debian, I'm a Debian, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I never would have thought, you know, I mean, that's freaking cool! And because of that, we're starting our new version, Utopic. Um, I've got code in Ubuntu now. Um, and it's because some guy jumped in, everything was there, and he wanted to put in a little bit of work to join the community to, like, get the, the product off the ground. So, then I went to PyCon, and I'm like, hey, um, uh, Paul, like, he's a, a guy I know, he was with the Pio Ha. Paul Tagliamonte. Yeah, he's in the, uh, he was, he helped run the Ohio Linux, or not, um, a bunch of user group or whatever for a while. Anyways, he's like, oh, that's really cool that someone's packaging that for Debian. That'll be really awesome. Let me know if you need any help, because he's a Debian developer. And he's like, yeah, he goes, um, Mako uses Bookie for all his bookmarks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. He's like, yeah, no, totally. I thought you knew. Like, no, no one ever told me. This guy's been out here to give talks out here before. <coughs> he gives a lot of talks. Uh, he's, if you don't know who he is, you know, then I'm sorry, but, you know, if you do know who he is, the fact that he uses my software was like, you know, again, this is unconfirmed. I just want to say, like, I've not talked to him about it, but rumors from people that know him and talk to him directly is he uses my bookmark app to keep track of his own bookmarks. And so, you know, and I'm like, I'm a Debian, and famous people use my software, and like, oh my gosh. So, I guess kind of my lesson with this is that, <laughs> and this is just, you know, the path that Bookie is on. I won't even say it has gone through because it's nowhere near done. But it's kind of like this idea that, you know what, this, this stuff takes time, you know, and it takes, I mean, you know, I've almost quit several times, um, you know, and I've taken time away where, like, I've done woodworking for three months and not touched Bookie other than to make sure that the thing still ran. Um, 
And that's okay and it's healthy, right? Like you can't, you, you know, you have to be able to do that. But I want to say like you have to be prepared to work, to go it alone, and to learn new things, right? Um, when I wanted to run my own bookie instance up on the web and I wanted to put it on uh, my own servers, I went and got a colo and a rack and I had to sysadmin it all and you know, like, you know, you have to be willing to like go the extra mile to do things that aren't just, oh, I hack on my software project. Like, no, you gotta do the full gamut, the testing, the CI setup and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what's kind of crazy you always have to keep in mind is you never really know with open source software how how wide your impact really is. I don't, I didn't, I don't know if Mako uses my stuff, right, uh, at all. And so like this is that mean readability library. Um, and I pulled the stats down and I hadn't even realized it got this way. So as far as I'm aware, I'm the only one that's ever really used it. <laughs> but it had 355 downloads last week and about three grand in the last month. <clears throat> and this was kind of cool. When I searched for B readability, this other project came up. And this project had changed to using B readability as a dependency. So now there's a library that depends on my library to keep moving. You know, I didn't even realize it because until I went and did the search for this talk, I didn't know. Um, and at PyCon, there was a guy that's like B readability. Like, oh, I think my old job uses that as part of their document like processing workflow or whatever. And it's like, really? Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> So, um, the other thing I want to say is I've thought many, many times about rewriting it. And you guys know Joel Spolsky? Mm -hmm. He has this thing, the giant lesson from Mozilla is like never rewrite. And I've taken that to heart and I think that's been a really good thing because never rewriting means that A, you get to practice software in the real world where you get handed crap software and your job is to make it uncrap or at least try not to add too much more crap to it, right? Um, and it keeps you moving forward, right? I mean, I spent my last three years working on just the web side of this thing and not doing the Firefox extension and not doing the Chrome extension. And I wouldn't, the project wouldn't be where it's at today. It wouldn't be packaged in Debian or trying to get it packaged into Debian if that was the case, right? It would just be this little small thing that I hacked on. But it would be really beautiful because I rewrote it like four times and it would probably be in, you know, Node.js or something now or, you know, some other language or you've written in Go or something, you know. So, any questions? Yeah. Can you demo it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By all means. I'm curious what I'm looking at. Yeah, so. Does it run on Windows? <laughs> <laughs> Not just welcome. Who cares? I mean, it's all about it. So, I mean, this is. Well, he's